Hello well wishers and welcome to my channel Aspiring Minds. In today's video we are going to solve a case of a murder trial. So, we are going to be doing a short story called The Case for Defense written by Graham Greene. So, grab your virtual seats and let's begin. Graham Greene was a British author known for his works exploring moral and political issues. He wrote a lot of novels, short stories and plays which helped him gain recognition for a different style of writing and complex characters. His works often delve into the complex human nature, the moral dilemmas and the impact of political events on individuals. The story is set in the Central Criminal Court, commonly known as the Old Bailey, where a murder trial takes place. The events of the story unfold in Northwood Street, a location relevant to crime and the subsequent con chaos that happens in the crowded vicinity of the court. Here are the central characters of the story for you. We have Adams. He is the accused, a heavy and stout man with bloodshot eyes. We have Mrs. Salmon, a key witness who claims to have seen Adams near the crime scene. We've got Henry McDougall, another witness who nearly ran Adams down at the corner of Northwood Street. We've got old Mr. Wheeler, who's a neighbor who witnessed Adams shortly after the crime. We have counsel for the Crown who represents the prosecution and counsel for the defence who represents the accused. So let's see what does the story have in store for us. Now for better understanding, I have divided the story into a total of 5 parts. You will have to read the story on your own and after that, here is a gist for you that will help you to understand what the story is about. You can hear the video first and then read the story or vice versa and if you want I'll soon make a detailed video where I line by line explain the prose piece but for now let's see what the story is all about so the first part begins where we have the crime and the initial evidence that is a murder has taken place in Northwood Street and Adams is arrested based on the accounts or reports given by the witnesses now they recall seeing Adam near the crime scene and he was also carrying a hammer and wearing gloves so based on these details we see Adams getting arrested from Northwood Street next we see the trial taking place where the Crown presents a strong case against Adams with multiple eyewitnesses they are all being able to give account of how at different points of time they have seen Adams in that area now the defense plans to plead mistaken identity with Adams's wife providing an alibi. alibi. Adam's wife is going to help in providing a case where yes, they are going to prove the fact that Adams has also got a twin brother and perhaps the witnesses have seen him and Adams is not the one who is to be mistaken to be guilty of committing the murder. Now at this time when all this had been happening, we have Mrs. Salmon's another character who is a witness in the story and she confidently identifies that it is Adam who has committed the murder. She has seen it happening. Now the defense further cross-examines and introduces the possibility of a twin brother and that is how they feel that even though Mrs. Salmon has identified Adams as the murderer, it is actually Adams' twin brother who had committed the murder and not him. It is at this time in the story that a twist takes place where we see the defense revealing that the there is of course the presence of Adam's identical twin right there in the courtroom itself. Now Mrs. Ad Salmon is unable to differentiate and it further casts a doubt on her identification skills. She was being very confident that yes it is Adams who's committed the murder but it so happens that they've been able to bring that twin brother to the courtroom and now the question is laid out about identifying who is the real murderer and even Mrs. Salmon is very confused at the identical twin situation. 
You see, in less than no time, we have nearly come to the end of the story. Because there's lack of evidence, Adams is free. He is decided to be not guilty of having committed the murder. However, in a shocking turn of events, one of the twins dies in front of the bus and it looks that person looks similar to the murder victim now the story leaves uncertainty about the true identity of the murderer because the murder had been committed in the same way as the one of the murderers dies or one of the twins dies you see how there's a tragic ending at the end of the story now let us have a look at the three major themes of the story. First of all, the story explores the theme of mistaken identity and the consequences on relying only on the account of eyewitnesses. That's what we do when there is a trial that's going on for judgment. Eyewitness accounts are one important aspect of passing judgments but because of the presence of a twin it leads to mistaken identity and they are not able to identify as to who is the actual murderer secondly the story raises questions about whether we can rely on the legal system and there are also moral implications of the decisions made in the pursuit of justice just because the judge at that time is morally moved he or she may take a decision which may or may not favor the person who's fighting the case. So you cannot completely rely on the legal system. It is not a completely reliable method of providing justice. And finally, we see how the tragic turn of events at the end introduce an element of irony. Now by irony, I mean that when the situation that was supposed to happen something completely opposite to that happens is known as an irony and it makes the readers contemplate think about the concept of divine vengeance it is god who intervened and provided the justice there is a high chance that perhaps the person who died by you know being run over by a bus was the actual person who had committed the murder and even though the legal system because of lack of proper evidence was not able to provide justice it is god in the form of divine intervention that justice was truly provided so the story is a thought provoking exploration of human judgment no matter how much uh, judge may be experienced the legal system they may have complete faith in ultimately legal proceedings are complex and there are unpredictable twists that await and we need to submit to chance to luck and also to the decision ultimately taken by god So that's it from this video. I hope you liked it. Do hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel for more such future updates. Thank you for watching. Bye.